And ABC election analyst Anthony Green gave us his take on where the count finished last night. Well, look, it was a complete and utter landslide. There's no other word for it, David. But if you look at the first preference votes on the night, the Labor Party's polled 58% of the first preference vote. Now, in the modern era where you've got lots of minor parties, it's rare for a major party to ever reach 50%. But that was just an astonishing result. The Liberal Party had their lowest vote ever at the last election with a little over 31%. They're down to just under 21. The national vote uh, hasn't been hit as much. One nation completely collapsed in Western Australia, though they didn't have much presence in the campaign. If you look at that change in vote, the Labor vote up 16%, uh, Liberals down 20.4, 10.4. And if you look at the two-party preferred swing, right, Labor's gone 51 seats, definitely, out of 59. That's an absolute massive majority. 13.1% swing. Now, the last election, the swing was 12.8%. So over two elections, there's been a 26% swing. That's one in four West Australians have shifted from voting on the, the rights of politics for the Liberal Party and, and, and allies and, and is now voting for the Labor Party. Party. And in a seat like Rockingham, which is the Premier's own seat, he's got 80% of the first preference vote. It's just a massive landslide. And of course, the opposition leader, Zach Kirkup, lost his seat. And Anthony, we always need to be a little bit careful when it comes to federal implications from state elections. But what could this extraordinary result mean for the Morrison government? Well, you always have to be cautious translating a state result into a federal result. If you'd looked at the 2017 WA election, you would have predicted on those numbers the Liberals would lose five or six seats at least. They didn't lose any. But the, I think the two implications are, one is about Western Australia. The Liberal Party may come out of this election with only two or three lower house seats. That's not many people you can put on the payroll working for Liberal MPs. You know, and The parties rely on having people in some sort of job where they can work on party affairs while on a salary. And and the Liberal Party's just lost nearly any sort of employment for their party of parachicks and like in, in the state. So they're weakened financially. And if Mark McGowan runs the WA campaign for the Labor Party, you know, you can see some of those figures flowing through. Though you've got to remember, WA voters seem to be able to tell the difference between state Labor and Canberra Labor. But the other implication is that we've now seen two popular state Labor governments elected with swings to them in Queensland in October and now in Western Australia. The Morrison government holds 34 of the 46 seats in the two states. So they absolutely dominate the two states federally. And they've only got a three seat majority and yet they absolutely dominate those two states where popular Labor governments have been re-elected. They can't afford much of a swing at all in those two states. If they lose you know, three seats in Western Australia or four and four in, in Queensland, that's their majority gone. Where do they win seats from Labor? So that's the difficulty in a result like this, and, and the one in Queensland is, sure, um, state Labor governments, those results don't through, flow through to federal politics, but you know, um, this shows that there are problems for the Morrison government well away from the centre in Canberra.